All right, KM6LYW viewers, it is here. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2 Wireless. I don't know what we're supposed to call it. I just kind of made that up. Raspberry Pi 2. I'm sorry. I See, I got it wrong. Raspberry Pi Zero Version 2 Wireless. RPi 02W, maybe? That's what we'll call it. This is it, the new Raspberry Pi. Um, take the Basically, take the CPU off of a Raspberry Pi 3. That's this guy. Stack some RAM on it, and you got the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wireless. Uh, so this is a new semiconductor made by the Raspberry Pi folks. Uh, it's, a, it's stacked. There's a CPU and RAM on top of that. This is the Wi-Fi module, and you should be familiar with the rest of this. Uh, the one downside on this is it still only has 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, so it's, in my opinion, it's not very good for like a full desktop with a file manager and a web browser and all that. Uh, but we are not using it for that. We are running one application on this at a time and with maybe some audio decoders behind it. Um, we can totally use the extra cores, and we do not need the extra memory for the DigiPi project, which is the web browser that you see over here. So the Raspberry Pi 2, nope, see I got it wrong, Raspberry Pi 0 to wireless. <laughs> I'll get, uh, by the end of the video, I'll, I'll get this right. I'm pretty stoked about this new device. Uh, the DigiPi that we keep talking about runs spectacularly on this. Um, it is like the, it was just the timing was perfect. Um, all of the GUI apps are running full blast on this. Uh, so it's like a Pi 3, only much smaller, much lower power. Hey, before we look, do a demonstration, I got a thank the guys here. Um, this has been amazing. So we're in the third day of November and these are the November guys. So Chris, Calix, WP4, Romeo Uniform, Mike, thank you. Ravi, Peter, W4FDT, Ziggy Zog. Hey, I got to get your names. Maybe I'll look up your names in QRZ and get those. And then of course, there's just not enough room on, on the, uh, the Patreon board here. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, Patreon.com slash KM6LYW if you want to subscribe to this YouTube channel and get early access to software from KM6LYW Radio, including uh, the DigiPi right now. So uh, the DigiPi is a Raspberry Pi hotspot for data modes. You know how there's a lot of hotspots and zoom spots for, for digital voice. Well, this is kind of like the same thing, only for data modes. So for CW, PSK, uh, APRS, AX.25, every data mode you can think of, this does, and you can access all of it with a web browser as a hotspot. Uh, you don't need to know Linux command lines or config files or any of that stuff. Um, it just sits there on your Wi-Fi network or becomes a hotspot if you're out in the field. So DigiPi 1.5 Mark II is out there right now, and this is early release for basically for patrons of KM6LYW Radio. All right, so back to the Raspberry Pi Zero Two Wireless. <laughs> I think that's the first time I got it right here. Um, so we've got a DigiPi actually running on it, and it is connected up to this Yaesu Niner Niner One. Um, we are on an FT8 frequency right now. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Um, I don't have the uh, the extra hardware on there right now. Now, normally a DigiPi would come with a uh, an audio board. Um, a stacking header and, a, and an optional monitor, and, you know, that displays the status and call signs that are going by. Um, so I don't have any of that set up yet. In fact, I don't even have the uh, the header soldered onto this guy yet. This, so this guy's headerless. I don't know if you can buy one with the header. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys find one with the header on it. It's it's really not that hard to solder on a header. Um, and to give you an idea of the size here, so this is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, I believe. Um, basically, this CPU you get transplanted over to our, our favorite low-power Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's awesome. So this guy has twice the memory. So if you need, a, if you want to run a desktop, this is more for you. Um, if you want to run a dedicated um, hotspot for data modes for amateur radio, the DigiPi is really where it's at, especially when it comes to power consumption. If I remember the right, the idle power was the same it was like 100 milliamps um, that's next to nothing right that's not you know that's like a bright led uh when it's at load i think it's it's about two and a half times the power consumption of the original raspberry pi which is this guy over here in fact we can put them together for comparison so these this is the original dude over here um, he's one core 512 megabytes and then the, the new raspberry pi zero two wireless <laughs> got it right the second time um, four cores 512 megabytes and uh, improved Wi-Fi as well, if I remember right. And I think it has a, a Bluetooth uh, low power also. So we might be able to use that. So uh, when we're accessing the DigiPi from our web browser or tablet or phone, 
Um, we can access it over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, of course, um, and we'll see if we can make use of those, those newer modes. I don't think it has 5G uh, Wi-Fi. I don't think so, not yet, at least uh, if I'm rem remembering right. Um, so just to give you an idea, um, I don't want to do a full demo of the DigiPi. There's a lot of other videos that will do that. Um, but let's uh, let's just fire up FT8. That's the one that took forever to load on the original Raspberry Pi. So let's uh, we're going to click on FT8 over here. I'm going to say on. All right. Now FT8 is starting in the background. All right. So I'm going to go over here and click. Actually, we're going to wait for this to turn green. That's green now. That means FT8 is running inside the DigiPi in a virtual display. Remember, there's no keyboards or monitors here. We don't want any of that stuff. Uh, it's just a mess. So we use our phone or tablet or PC, and we're going to click on FT8. And then it immediately goes to the virtual display. And as you can see, it is already started up. I'm going to say OK here. Um, this is way zoomed in. Let me make this uh, zoomed out so you guys can see it. So as you can see, FT8 has already started. Um, you know, if we were still using the original Raspberry Pi Zero, we would still be waiting. So the problem with FT8 is we've got this GUI application basically burning half a core. And then we've got the decoder burning, you know, maybe a, a whole core. And it was just too much competition on the, on the original Raspberry Pi. But on the Raspberry Pi Zero Two Wireless, yeah, I said it right again. Um, it just hauls. So let's see, I'm on uh, 14.074. It should be working today. Um, yep, here the stations are coming in. Um, you notice the decode happened in less than a second. On the original Raspberry Pi Zero, the decode was taking upwards of eight, nine, ten uh, seconds, uh, depending on how much traffic there was out there. So there's another decode that happened in two seconds and this is a pretty standard station list so I'm gonna try and call this guy I'm gonna enable the transmitter we are transmitting uh, I know you can't hear it it's probably not very exciting to watch unless you're totally in the amateur radio but the, uh, the transmit light on this dude is uh, well let me see if I can point to it. it's a little there's a little red light that'll come on right here so anyways I responded to uh, November Delta 7 Charlie let's see if he'll respond all right I'm transmitting again. Yeah, our little red light's on. And I'm at, uh, what am I at? 25 watts. And I can't really turn up the monitor volume, but uh, I think you guys know what FT8 sounds like. It's a horribly dissonant cacophony. Here it is. I'm... Guys hear that? That's what, you know, a dozen signals sounds like all on the same channel. But the Raspberry Pi Zero Two Wireless loves that noise. Um, you can see how fast it's decoding here. Um, Let's see if he responded yet. Again, I'm only at 25 watts, but he's only a negative five, which is pretty good. Um, you know, we want between, you know, between negative 10 and zero. You know, if they're positive, they're like, you know, they're blasting into your antenna. So uh, it's totally working. This is FT8 running on the DigiPi version 1.5 Mark II, and it's on the Raspberry Pi Zero to wireless, um, it just works. So if you've got a DigiPi image already and you're already a patron of KM6LYW Radio, go ahead and yank your card out of your Raspberry Pi Zero, the old one, and jam it in the new one. And then uh, this this one's configured for a USB type radio. Um, if you have a, an old push to talk type radio, you can build the, the full DigiPi, which is, these are the extra parts you'd need if you don't have a USB based radio. You just get an, an audio board, a stacking header, and a cool little monitor. In fact, I can put this monitor on here. Um, I, I ordered a few more. Th these things, parts are getting really hard to find, you guys. It's supply chain stuff. So, this would be the, uh, the completed DigiPi with a full complement uh, Pi Zero, and then the audio board and the little monitor on top of that for to display stations and status. Um, so, that's it. The did Raspberry Pi Zero. Let's see if I can get it right. Two wireless. And also, um, I have additional hardware out here. Oop, there it is. <laughs> the 705. I, I barely have, I have two minutes of stick time on the 705, guys. Um, I, I'm told in the, in the, in the, in the groups on groups.io slash g slash digipi that it is working. Um, the version of Hamlib is a little old on the DigiPi, um, so it doesn't work out of the box. So if you change this CI-V address of this to the, the ICOM 7300, this guy, 
then uh, you can tell the DigiPi it's a 7300 and it works. Um, I just fired it up and then push to talk was working. I, it was, I was messing with the frequencies and stuff. I'm sure there's more I can change. Uh, the next version of DigiPi will be based on Debian Bullseye and it'll just have Hamlib support right out of the box for the 705. And while we're talking about 705s, okay, I wish I had more time to play with this. Check out this cool cage for this. I don't know if you guys have seen this. A good friend of mine builds these cages. And this is just a shameless ad for an otherwise just awesome cage. I mean, it's it's, it's solid uh, aluminum. I guess it's anodized and polished. Um, he has some CNC mills and is, and is making these. He actually has these going on uh, hamradio.com. That's H-R-O uh, for, for the rest of you. And yeah, they're kind of expensive, but wow. Are they nice? Um, I don't know what he's calling it. PV705 TC? Scott, we need a better name. So anyways, this is a, a Kilo Kilo 7 uh, Alpha India Romeo is making these. Um, just a fantastic cage. Thank you, Scott, for the hardware. I really appreciate it. So that is it for the new hardware for today. I just wanted to share the, the, the Raspberry Pi Zero V2 wireless is out, and the DigiPi runs flawlessly on it. Um, looks like someone else contacted that guy. I turned off my transmitter. Oh, well, we didn't get a connection this time. Um, I don't see anyone with strong signals either. But that is WSJTX FT8. Of course, if we want to stop that and turn it off just like that. We got slow scan television. We got FL Digi on here. Um, I'm just kind of curious how fast slow scan television starts. So I'm going to click on there and then uh, zoom out so we can see the pie. And then I'm going to click on SSTV here. And it should already be started. I mean, it's just that fast. There it is. We're already got slow scan television working. That's uh, 14 to 30 if you're into SSTV. And I'm not hearing. Nah, no images just yet. But uh, it's just, it's so much faster. So if you want to create an image, you say load. And so you see how, how fast this comes up? <laughs> there it is. Um, when you make your own image, we can transmit one here. So that's a slow scan television. And then I can turn that off on the DigiPi main page. And just uh, we're, we're trying to do performance stuff here. Hopefully you can see um, I've got a, a top window over here kind of showing how much CPU these processes are burning. Um, up here we can see that there are four glorious CPUs, CPU 0, 1, 2, and 3, all of them. Thumping away here. In fact, we don't even need all those CPUs. That's what's so cool about this. Um, what was I talking about? Uh, FL Digi. Let's click on that. FL Digi. We wait for the little green light to come on. That means FL Digi is doing what FL Digi does. FL Digi is pretty amazing in that it uh, it does all the modes you can think of. You know, PSK31, keyboard to keyboard, packet radio, CW. Um, you know, I'm in BPKS31. Let me shoot down to the calling frequency on 20 meters there. And it's uh, 14.070, and we're in digital mode on 25 watts. And uh, we can al already see signals coming in. I can just highlight a signal, and it'll it'll print up here. You can see November 9, HWP day, KC3, uh, Foxtrot Lima, uh, happy wife, happy life. Ah, it broke up a little bit, but boy, I know, I know what that means. Um, yeah, he's breaking up. He's a pretty weak signal coming in here. Um, anyways, this is FL Digi. I could do this all day. You know, if you want to do, you could do, these are all the modes it does. A CW, more than, more than you can imagine, really, FL Digi. And it just runs full blast. Um, looking over here at the CPU, you can see the system's 77% idle, decoding all of these streams right now. Um, the, uh, the, the virtual display is burning 35% of uh, one core, FL Digi 20%. Um, kind of depends on how fast the, uh, Screen's updating. Okay, so Raspberry Pi Zero, two wireless, and the DigiPi just hauls butt on this, you guys. Um, I'm, I'm fully impressed. Okay, so this has been K a KM6 LYW radio production. If you're interested in the DigiPi, I encourage you to go to Krager.org slash uh, DigiPi. Actually, it used to say Patreon. So Krager.org slash DigiPi. I know. I wish I could zoom that. I just, I just can't. Krager.org slash digital. I should put it on the, the website here so you guys can see it. And uh, of course, it's available. The latest version is just is available to uh, patrons of KM6 LYW Radio on Patreon.com. And uh, if you get your DigiPi, uh, let me know how it works. Um, let me know what radio you've got it working with. Um, we are looking for images from people. Uh, if you've got a DigiPi built, um, send me your images. There are some really cool uh, case ideas out there. 
and uh, to really make this a rugged, uh, field-oriented uh, radio. All right, hey guys, KM6LYW Radio, and I am clear.